Hello and welcome to the run-up today. My name is Nyamgul Agaji and it's always a pleasure to be on the show uh, to talk with you knowing that you're there watching us right here. It will be another amazing time to dissect some matters arising on the run-up and the run-up to 2023 as it is. Uh, some of the items on the front burner are the fact that Tinubu's performance at Chatham House in UK has continued to draw diverse reactions, particularly from the opposition parties and supporters who were dissatisfied by the candidate's decision to throw some of the questions he was asked to the APC chieftains, including the Kaduna State Governor Malam Nasir El Rufai and immediate past Governor of Ekiti State, Kayode Fayomi. We'll be looking at the reactions from uh, 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 in this interview that we are going to be having shortly with two gentlemen that will be talking to us. And we also have uh, a secular that has been given just yesterday, I think, by the Central Bank of Nigeria about how transactions are going to be made after the, or, or in January, or from January 2023. And so many people are reacting to that. But we're not talking intensively about that today. We'll just mention what the provisions of this secular are and what you are going to expect in 2023 when the new Naira uh, will take its place and they, the old ones will be edged out of circulation. But like I said, we'll be talking with Mr. Alexia Wilcox, who is a public affairs analyst, and also with Mr. Theophilos Akatuba right after this break. Stay with us. You're welcome back. Uh, it's still the run-up, and um, we're looking at what happened at Chatham House in the UK, uh, where the presidential candidate of the APC went to address the press. I uh, remember that um, uh, other presidential candidates, some presidential candidates, were at a a presidential debate, as it is organized by a media house. But he went to the U United Kingdom, and he granted an interview to uh, the press there and he ruled out his plan for Nigeria in 2023 and beyond. And so people are uh, reacting to whatever happened there, what the, the interview was about, how the interview, interview went and so many other things around that. But we have, like I said, uh, Mr. Alexa Wilcox who has joined us here this morning. Mr. Wilcox, welcome to the program. Thank you very much for having me. It's my most pleasure. Nice to be on your program again after a very long time. <laughs> it's good to have you here. We also have Mr. Theophilus Akatuba also standing by to talk uh, with us on the issue. Mr. Akatuba, welcome. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here and also to say hello to uh, Wilcox. Nice, uh, a long time ago. Um, <laughs> we have been on the Okay, uh, that means I've done a reunion for everybody here on the show today. Okay, well, uh, let's go through the business of the day. Um, no matter what divide anybody might be, let's just try to x-ray what happened at Chatham House. First of all, what is uh, your take on the fact that it had to be Chatham House in the UK and then how the interview went? Let me begin with you, Mr. Wilcox. First of all, I blame the presenter of the APC, Bala uh, Metinubu, for um, taking, taking this uh, manifesto, stating that to the world, to look at our house. Chatham House provided an opportunity for not just Nigerians, but every policy maker of the world, everyone that has any serious policy position, go to Chatham House provided platform. And for you to be there, that means you have something of value. To offer either to your society or to the world in general. So it's not out of place that uh, Bola Metinubu was a guest of Chatham House. Uh, Chatham House is uh, equivalent of our own issue of international affairs in Nigeria or something above that 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 position because it's a policy uh, making uh, body. It's a policy advisory body that culminates views that take views from every part of the world, from notable people from the world, in order to be able to to to, to chat a cause. It's a research house, and so if you're invited there, yeah, that means you have something of value. So I want to congratulate the uh, Bola Metinubu for being a guest in Chatham House. It's just not anybody that can go to Chatham House and make statements. And um, be that that is me, I think his performance at Chatham House is just there to display, to tell the world his position, his policies and programs as a presidential candidate trying to 
um, trying to be the president of the most populous nation, uh, black nation of the world. And so that, that platform was very, very apt, very, very important. And from there, the entire world, I mean, the entire world, the entire world today has heard of his program, has heard of his um, manifesto. He has been able to break it down and tell them so that they will know what and what he's about to do. And of course, Nigerians too will lash on on it because uh, from the video I saw, various uh, questions come from various Nigerians and non-Nigerians in diaspora. I mean, trying to extract or trying to prove or trying to pierce through the manifesto that he declared, his programs and plans, so that uh, they have a better understanding and a better view about him, about his programs and what he has for the Nigerian people. So for me, it's a, it's, a, it's a wonderful outing, and I salute him, and I salute the, the, the Chatham House Authority for giving the platform. I think it's something that should be encouraged. Thank you very much. Okay, um, uh, Mr. Katuba, uh, your, your take on uh, Tinubu in Chatham House and how he performed in the interview. Mr. Katuba, please. Hello, Mr. Katuba. Yes, I am with you. Yes, I'd like to get your own take. The performance of uh, Tinubu in Chatham House. First of all, the fact that he had to go to Chatham House to grant a press interview, which uh, uh, Nigerians have been clamoring to hear from him. Yes, uh, Nigerians have been hearing from him. Uh, there is no cessation of uh, commentary from Tinubu since this campaign started. Uh, the Chatham House, as Alexa has eloquently uh, explained and uh, illuminated, it's a place where serious-minded people are go and interrogate their plans. And uh, if you have a plan that you know is solid and globally relevant, you will make it available for the global community to interrogate you and also point out flaws in it. For him to have gone to that platform is the level of confidence uh, that he has in the plan they have put forward for Nigerians to make a decision on. And uh, that platform is also to reach out to a very powerful Nigerian community in diaspora. And for sometimes we are saying that they should vote. If you are asking them to even vote in the future, it is not also necessary that you present your manifesto because they are also stakeholders, even if they are not going to participate in casting the battle. They influence the vote. They have families back home. And in fact, they have a very loud voice on the social media. And so it's a very strategic move. And the outcome of it is highly commendable. And I think uh, we must be proud of the president, the man who is contesting for that office. He has such uh, a strategic outlook to issues. And that, that's the pride that I have. And I'm very happy uh, when he spoke before the questions. You can see uh, that he's someone that understands the terrain and understands the obvious. That's about it. Okay, uh, well, both of you have, uh, have spoken well, and you, you commend his efforts, you commend whatever happened there, that he had to go to that place. And both of you also have said that uh, if you're serious-minded, let me use the word of Mr. Akatugwa now, I'm remaining with you, Mr. Akatugwa, that if you're serious-minded, you go to that place and uh, expose your manifesto to the world, as it were. Now, does this mean that anybody who does not go to Chatham House is not capable of ruling Nigeria? Because a lot of people even call this going to Chatham House all the time, like a colonial mentality. What would you respond to that? What will be your response yes, to that? I, 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 I first, it is not as if if you do not go to Chatham House, then you are not qualified. That is not there. The other point is that colonial mentality, when you are speaking to your community, who you know live in these places, and you have decided to go there to interrogate and interact with them, is it, out of respect, out of recognition for that constituent. And so uh, it doesn't disqualify anyone, but it brings your, your idea to global interrogation. And it makes it even better and illuminates it better for Nigeria at home, abroad, and the global community who will be interacting with the future president. They should put the stuff or the quality of man that is coming into their own and build a level of confidence and then prepare them for future engagement. You know, that's the way I think. 
Okay. Uh, Mr. Mr. Wilcox, um, one of the, the issues Nigerians are having with uh, the Chatham House interview was the fact that um, Ashiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu himself, when it got to very critical issues that he was asked, delegated these questions to his uh, lieutenants, as it were, including the Kaduna State Governor, Nasir El Rufai, and so many other people that were in his entourage. He, Nigerians are not seeing it as a delegation of power or a delegation of these questions to the people that he felt were competent enough to say that. Nigerians are seeing it as incompetence on his own part that he could not answer these questions himself. What's your response? Well, I, I will empathize with those Nigerians, uh, real, 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 real form of empathy for those Nigerians that will mischievously uh, make a, 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 a political failure in terms of trying to create a political capital out of the brilliant performance of the APC presidential candidate, Bola Metunuba Chatham House. Like I said, I will really empathize with them. Um, the fact remains that if anybody has known Bola Metunuba right from Lagos as the governor of Lagos, he is a man. That is that believes so much in teamwork. I've never been close to him. I've never met him one on one. But from his antecedent in Lagos, he's a man with teamwork. He believes so much in using men to achieve objectives. That is a clear indication of a man that comes from private. So remember, he's a he's, he's a trained accountant. He's a tra he was trained in some of the best institutions, Deloitte and Co. He served in Mobi. So he understands the element of teamwork and responsibility, delegated responsibility. Now, I was not in the party that drew the, the, the APC manifesto. Of course, it is not written by Bala Metinubu alone. That manifesto is a product of the brain, of a think tank of responsible and dedicated men and women that are his trusted and well a, 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 a selected, crafted out uh, uh, persons that he knew possessed the capacity to, to, to draft a manifest and to deliver on those, uh, on, on those promises. So it is not out of place to start exposing his personality in terms of delegation. Look, nobody knows it all. And there has never been a time where Amitribu has ever claimed to be a master of know it all. No, there's no way to. What, what, what he always claimed to do is to do it mentality. He believes that the task must be done. So he must use men and the right set of men to do that job. So exposing those kind of attributes now is a better thing. Look, that is why today you can look back and look at the men and women Bolatinibu has built over the years. If it's a leader that is putting everything in his own portfolio, that stands only by himself, put everything in the file like in his armpit, like so many governors, so many people do, he, he will not be able to expose these people. Let, 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 let me on Mr. Wilcox, Mr. Wilcox, just a moment. Let me understand this before before there's a misunderstanding somewhere. Let me just understand the statement you made. You say nobody uh, owns knowledge. Nobody has a monopoly of knowledge. He doesn't. He has never said he knows everything. Are you saying that delegating these things is because he didn't know them, and then he, no. but he had people in his entourage that knew these things that no, uh, these questions, no, these no, answers no, 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 to the no, no, questions. I, I, no, 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 please, don't get me wrong. I say in the drafting of the manifesto, and of course, in the delivery of governance, people will bring in their ideas. He makes the final call. As Lagos State Governor, he used every available ma a, a, a human resource that he could gather, not just from Lagos State, from every part of the country. That's why he has commissioners from every other part of the country. He uses them, but he makes the final call. And that is where Lagos is today. He must get ideas. Even the most trusted president of America, Bill Clinton, as intended as Bill Clinton was, he has men and women here he must listen to, that must give advices, that must bring in opinion, that will look at his opinion and, 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 re, and recalibrate it for him, for, for, for even as Bill Clinton, then he makes the final call. So exposing the, a team that, he was, that he's likely to work with at this point. Remember, this is not the first time he was exposing them. Even, 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 even at the conference in Lagos, I mean, I mean, when he had the press party in Lagos, he also exposed people. Some questions he would direct it to the vice president candidate. Some he would say, okay, he will not answer all. This one should answer. He is a master strategist. He knows these things. But of course, he has to also get input from people.
I mean, Bola Metilubu is not shy to ask questions. I, I, people that have worked with him closely, I remember when, at, at the point when the, uh, the Vice President Yemo was talking about an encounter they had with uh, De La Lake and the uh, Kadosa and all what in one, I mean, in, in one function. He said they even argue with him in the decision that they wanted to make. He allowed people, he, he allowed and tap on the intelligence. So asking these people to answer those questions is not out of place. And remember, in some of the questions, he will still he will still add to it after they have answered. He will not add to that, to, not because he doesn't know, but because he has to expose his team. He has to expose that everybody within the team is capable of delivering on those promises. So it's for me, it's a perfect strategy. He's not claiming to be a a a a, a, a one man uh, stop shop that he knows everything. No, but at the end of the day, the the the, the, the fact remains that he will make the final call, and that is what gives him advantage over other presidential candidates. He will make the final call after taking decisions, after taking the inputs from everybody. He will still make decisions. And that's why it's still Lagos it is today. You think it's only him that built Lagos? You think it's only him that starts from the beginning? No, he uses men. And at the end of the day, he makes the final call. And that is why you see what Lagos is today. And so that is for me. I mean, that's for me. It's the best strategy anybody can do. If being arrogant is not being showing that he doesn't know. Even in those questions, at the end of the, some of the answers, he still make an input to, to add the ones that they didn't say. That is a man that, has, that, that knows what he's doing as a, as, as a presidential candidate. As, as, as far as I'm concerned, I think I give him thumbs up in those, in those kind of strategies. Okay, maybe, maybe he's um, a trailblazer in a lot of things. Uh, let me come to you, Mr. Katuba. Um, this is a man who is, uh, who is going for an interview. That's the analogy everybody has been using. You want a job and... Yes, your CV has told us a lot of things about you, but we want to know how those things that are on your CV, uh, you, you can put them to practice. For instance, in our CVs, we always uh, write uh, ability to, uh, for teamwork. You like to, to, do, to work with a team. Uh, ability to do these, work under pressure, and the rest of those. And I've not seen, maybe it has happened somewhere else, but I've not seen where a president is trying to campaign to become, or someone rather, is trying to campaign to become a president and starts to delegate uh, questions that they are asked. Because no matter how good a document is, the person who has to enforce that document is that person when he becomes the president. So there's need to have an understanding of this document. So the manifesto was, was put in place by a lot of people. Yes, like Mr. Wilcox has said. But do you also think it was the, the smartest move for Tinubu to let others answer the questions that were asked him directly? OK, thank you very much for that question and uh, all your lines of thought. I'd like to quickly draw a simple I, I, was, I was quite astonished. At the beginning, I didn't understand it. But then when the time flowed on, I now understood what he was demonstrating. He was not showing inability to answer. The man was showcasing to Nigerians and the world that governance is teamwork. He was just he was showing it. He was not proving anything. I give you an example. I was applying for a job of a general manager in Ghana, Accra. At that station then was top rated. And the consultant asked me to bring a blueprint of what I want to achieve in a year. And I remember that I drew my plans for the radio station and I realized that there are some big jockeys that I needed to showcase at the interview. And I also needed to showcase uh, a, a marketing plan you know, I went to that presentation with this team. When it got to their turn, I asked them to speak to it. And I got that job. I became general manager of Top Bridge. And I, I just did not realize until he started doing it. Look, the, the, the fact that <laughs> anyone could suggest that he doesn't know what he wants to do is, is laughable, but it's part of the political game we're all playing now. You can either play it up or you play it low. Let me say another thing. Anyone interrogating Bola Ahmed Tirunupu now or questioning him about what he wants to do should remember that you are interrogating the manifesto. And that manifesto is a product of teamwork. He knows what it is in it, but he will choose to say that on this area, there is a man in the group that can, mock, that can speak to him in a way that I might not be able to do currently. 
but I will be able to tell you where the direction is. The United States of America, the president will say we are going to the moon. They have no idea of how to start, but they do go to the moon. That's why the man is telling you, I am a doer, I'm a thinker, I'm a visionary. Nigerians will understand the campaign. You are voting in not a man who knows it all, but the man who has the vision of where we are going and find the resources that will take us there. That's leadership. Anyone who wants to define leadership, if you look at three candidates that have come to an interview and anyone says, I know it all, anytime a good thing is done, I'm the only one who does it good, everyone else is bad. And you want to give that person a job. Apart from the fact that you won't really create a good leader, a good leader is not only who knows it, but who knows the politics of leading men and women. Ask those in management. At a certain level, it's not about knowledge anymore. It's about ability to manage men, resources, manage people. I think the country should be proud. And I hope the other presidential candidates will begin to understand now that you have to showcase your team as well. Because we want a president that will hit the ground running. We said Buhari spent six months and we're not happy. But this man is telling you, I have the cabinet in place. We are ready to run from day one. I think those who want to make political choices should begin to think deeply instead of being shallow. That's my opinion. Okay, uh, let me remain with you, Mr. Akatsuga. Before I go back to Mr. Wilcox, um, it's, it's like, it's like um, someone who has gone to school. He wants to become a doctor. He may not know everything, but uh, before an exam, there's a syllabus that comes out and you're asked to study that syllabus. You may not know everything because you didn't write uh, the chemistry textbooks, you didn't write the physics textbooks, but you are given a syllabus. That syllabus, let's say that is the thing we are calling a manifesto now. Then you're given an exam. It is expected that as much as possible you understand the provisions inside that syllabus to write that exam. When you finish, you can now become that doctor. If you like, you choose your own uh, nurses, you choose your own uh, uh, lab scientists, you choose whoever you're going to choose. But this person has not written that exam. The exams he's already delegating. And you're calling that a good um, show of a leader. I still yeah, don't your analysis understand. Is, your, your analysis is not exactly correct. This is not a leader. This is not an exam. The Nigerian people who he wants to lead are asking questions. Even though he went to Chatham House, so he was talking to no, Nigerians. The question, question they were asking him was what he was going to do on specific areas which are contained in his manifesto. Yes. And he decided that his team members should answer it. Even President Buhari... Does it, does it show that he understands what is being asked of him? No, to, the, to, the, to the shallow minded it will be shallow-minded and uneducated people will misunderstand it. But the educated one who is astute in leadership quality will know the quality of, of, of what's before him. Shallow, you know, in terms of human resource and capacity to employ the right people is also part of the attributes of great company and great leader. So for the Nigerian population, some, a lot of them are followers of opinion. Those who mold opinion, who believe they are well schooled, well educated, should not mold, should not direct the public in a in a wrong way in order to gain political. You have to be sincere if you really want national development. In national development is a teamwork. The man only showcases it, not that he is incapable of answering it. After all, he has dealt with different communities and he has not done this. For him to have done this is to tell you he went to that platform to demonstrate something. He's been, doing, he's been talking in Nigeria. The only town hall meeting. He's not delegated questions to anybody. He has answered all his questions. And so for, for people to run to town and begin to, 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 to make up the note, it's a testament that they are, they are very shocked and quite devastated, especially the political opponent. The level of assurance is too high in this campaign for all of us. They are speaking and repeating impossibility. Impossibility. They are just, they're just repeating and playing to the talent. Saying to the, to the gullibility of the low-minded Nigeria. They are telling them of, of uh, bag of rice of 7,005. That tells you how low they are. They are very disrespectful of the people. They, they, they promote poverty. They don't want a Nigerian to be able to afford the rice of 15,000. They want him to live his life and be looking for 7,500 rice that is not available anywhere. That's the kind of politician that have seen recently. 
I'm so very, I'm so scandalized and ashamed to have quality of men like that. Deceitful people, wicked people who want to tell you that you should buy the product at a cheaper rate so that you don't aspire to grow. When you own your pet book yourself, you, could, you will no longer the same rate you used to charge for your book. That tells you that when they are around to town, at the level of criticism they have, and the criticism is so lame, and you look at them, they are full of trash. They are not saying anything. They are repeating themselves. They are even repeating what Buhari has already done. When you ask them, they don't even talk about Siemens deal. They don't, they don't talk about the megawatts of electricity. They don't talk about the metering revolution. All they saying is to tell you the truth. Right. Okay. Uh, uh, let me go to Will Mr. Wilcox now. Mr. Akatuba, please let me go to Mr. Wilcox. Uh, Mr. Wilcox, are you there? Yeah, okay, um, I like the, the way you gentlemen are talking glowingly about um, what happened at Chatham House. But let me, let me just ask, um, as a person, would you rate uh, the, the level of security or insecurity in Kaduna State so high that Nasir El Rufai, for instance, will, will be the one to showcase to the world as a person who knows anything that has to do with security because he was the one delegated to answer the question on security well um let me say this uh let me thank mr Ketuba for its uh, comments and i think if i have time to do that we must also expand on that but let me say this i think you see if you look at the person's development in which chooses to answer those questions you will discover that these are people that have hands-on hands-on experience on those areas. You just talked about Nasser El Rufai. Nasser El Rufai has superintended over one of the, over, over, over one of the most uh, uh, terrible, uh, uh, domestically influenced uh, uh, terrorist activity or insecurity in, in most, apart from, uh, uh, I mean, apart from Brunei State, apart from Brunei and Yobe, that Boko Haram. What Nasser El Rufai had to contend with was basically in both internal tribalistic, religious, and all facets, all facets of, uh, of uh, agamuts and facets of uh, pits and pits of uh, architecture here and there that culminate up to, his, to the insecurity in Kaduna State. Because if you go to Southern Kaduna, this insecurity architecture is different. Most of them have to do with tribalistic uh, tendencies, some has to do with ethnic, some has to do with religious. And so he has, he has been able to uh, to within the, the within the confines of his um, of his powers, been able to to still keep Kaduna State going. So he is equipped. He, he, in another in, 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 in another in, in another response, he asked Wale do to, to respond. Wale do is a sound economist and I, who was who was served one time as Commission of Finance under him. A sound economics. So he asked him to respond. So already, let's just the, summarize the, this. Let's summarize this. If, for instance, Tinubu becomes the president, and everybody yeah. who answered whatever question is made the minister of that thing he answered, would you be comfortable with a Nasir El Rufai being the minister for defense, maybe, uh, or internal affairs, whatever is going to be the portfolio that is going to bring peace to Nigeria, knowing what has happened in, in Kaduna. Because experience is not enough. If you are a gate man in a university, it doesn't mean that you're going to have a PhD because you are in the it academic is, environment. It, so he has the experience, sorry, sorry. but has he been sorry, able, sorry. Has he been able to, to use that experience and do the right thing that you are comfortable with that if he becomes someone that the security architecture is handed over to in 2023 as minister, he let can me, perform. Let, 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 let me say this, and we do respect. Some of your analogies are not totally in, in tandem with, with what we are discussing. Like when you you said Nasir El Rufai has had to contend with a lot of things. How has he used this, uh, this experience that he has had with insurgency and kidnapping and all the other things? How has he made, it, made Kaduna safer? Because experience is not enough. As so he has seen fact, these things. Of, has he been able to... As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact let's, let me say this, because time is tight. Let me say this. I think I will, I will give thumbs up to uh, Nasu El Rufai. Because the gang up against Nasu El Rufai in Kaduna has been terrible. Both from religious angle, ethnic angle. Remember, he has to contend with, with uh, El Zazaki and his, and his group. He has to contend with what's happening in southern Kaduna. And this man is still standing, and Kaduna is still, is still there. 
Kaduna security has improved to the point that people are still trooping to Kaduna. Mm -hmm. I just went to Kaduna recently. He doesn't have the total, the total powers because, I mean, there's security for both within the state and the federal, of course, more of the federal. But within what he has, I think I will give thumbs up to a man like Errol Pai. If, if, the pre if the incoming president, Brother Mayor Tinubu, find Errol Pai okay. competent to so either be interior minister, yeah. I promise her, to so either be interior minister or minister of defense, I think I will leave that choice to Bola Metinubu if he so choose. Okay. But if I, as a less, as from an outside perspective, mm. and I see what er, Nasser Erufa has contended with since becoming governor, the gang up either both from religious perspective, both from the, uh, the, the ethnic perspective, and other perspective. I'm not a fan of Erufa before now, but I'm speaking from my heart. I will give this man a thumbs up because of well, the way he has been able okay. to manage that diversity, those complexities, and Kaduna is still going on today okay i think i should give him a, a thumbs up so he All has right. experience he has skill okay okay thank you for this, uh, at 100 but if, i think he has it if what we have, have government kaduna for eight years i think if I, we I, have, if I, we I, have I, time I, if we have time we might have to revisit what we are saying now but we have olubenga uh, george standing by also to join us on the show mr george welcome to the run-up Good morning. Thank you for having me. Yes. Okay. We're talking about the Chatham House. Uh, the APC presidential candidate went to Chatham House in the UK and did what he did. Uh, he was interviewed and he delegated some questions to some of the people that came with him to answer. So we're trying to X-ray what happened there, why he had to go to Chatham House and uh, the, the action that he took in answering the questions that he answered, his general performance there at that uh, interview. So what is your take about the entire Chatham House uh, event? All right. Um, thank you so much once again and for the opportunity. Uh, you know, uh, it's quite interesting to have a Masio Adibola Metinubu, you know, address the word, address Nigeria, you know, uh, from an extension from outside the country, um, especially because uh, there have been demands, you know, uh, for Ashwaju to talk to Nigerians via the recognized and established media houses in the country. But uh, up until now, he has chosen not to do so. And I think um, that's where I'd like to pick the conversation from. Um, Nigeria is our country. And um, I'm sure if he's going to win presidency in 2023, he's going to be the president of Nigeria. One of the major challenges that people talk about uh, where the Buhari administration is concerned right now is that he's more, uh, he's more used to I mean, going out there. He likes showing up outside the country. He likes you know, uh, making positions known. I mean, he's always getting out to uh, either for medical tourism or one tourism or the other. Uh, in the name of, of, of official duty. So uh, we are looking forward to a Nigerian president that will be 100% Nigerian, that will stay back home, look at our issues, and address those issues as they um, emerge per time. So uh, I think for me, first of all, it is uh, not acceptable that somebody who is going to be our president, uh, who wants to be our president, uh, so to speak, uh, cannot stay within the shores of Nigeria and speak to Nigeria and uh, speak to the Nigerian press and speak to the Nigerian people and, you know, have them give grant them access, um, allow them to quiz him over his uh, uh, ability to provide the kind of governance that is required, especially at this sensitive time in the country. Um, that's on the one hand. Then when we now speak about the issues of um, uh, the quality of um, you know, uh, what was said and how the entire interview went. Uh, I would be very sincere to tell you that uh, um, it was a brilliant show in there. Uh, even though we will now still have to talk about uh, uh, the delegation. Um, I've listened to um, the other guest speak earlier about uh, him, you know, um, asking some of his cabinet members, so to speak, um, uh, prospective cabinet members, uh, you know, to also show they are 40. Uh, I think that's an opportunity, uh, but that again would have been better off at home. But having it's already done, so there is nothing we can do about that. But um, you now begin to look at all of these things that these people say. Interesting, I mean, very salient points. Very, sometimes you would want to say, uh, very, very, very interesting. But the question uh, is, 
when we place this brilliant idea that these guys have, uh, when we place it with what is uh, obtainable in Nigeria at the moment, uh, then you will find out that they are two worlds apart. So the question is, and the interesting thing is that most of them, you know, are in one way or the other acquiesced to the current administration of President Muhammad Buhari. I want to believe that some of them are members of the party. Ashwad Bola Metinbu was the national leader of the party for several years. Um, he has the respect. Uh, I mean, he was there. He did the magic in 20, 2015. And in 2019, again, they needed his magic wand, you know, to help President Buhari um, secure a second term in office. So if we look at that, uh, he has strong influence. Yes, because I know that um, the next excuse would be that after all, he's not in power, he's not in office, so he cannot make contributions. But I totally disagree with that because if you have brilliant ideas and you know that you always, the, you always have the president's ears, why have you not suggested some of these tactics that you intend to run Nigeria with? Why have you not suggested that to the president? You know, why are you not, you have control even over some members of this of the National Assembly. That, I mean, even within the cabinet, within uh, the president's cabinet, talking about the ministers, there are certain ministers that he can, with a call, he can impress upon and then say, we need to ensure that this and this is done. And then they take it to Mr. President. But where we are right now, none of that is done. And then new promises are given. And then we explain like, Nigerians okay. to actually accept them. I think that's, you know, uh, it, it is not mine to decide, okay. it is for Nigerians. But then again, uh, you want to ask, interesting ideas, brilliant ideas, but how practicable is it? Why have you not contributed um, this? Why have you not contributed this to uh, um, the current administration to ensure that things get better? At least, if okay. they have done that, okay, they, they will pick up from a, a, a very strong point now, you know? Menga, so we'll just, to just a moment. You, you have already made that point. It should have, uh, you, people are wondering, you are wondering uh, why these people who are part of this government will know all these and the things that are happening in Nigeria are still happening, which means, you know, there's a lot of uh, questions to be asked there. But in fairness to uh, the presidential candidate of the APC, he said that the people who organize the debates back home, he is not comfortable with them. And... Uh, a lot of people also have come out to say that if it were a very neutral or national body recognized that does debates, it would have been a different case. But this one is a media house that he doesn't trust. Even in America, we have various media houses that have biases uh, for, for some parties or some individuals. So uh, his excuse for you, is it good enough or not good enough? It is absolutely not good enough um, because uh, in Nigeria, we have several media houses. And I want to believe that not all of them will be against Ashwa Dibola Ahmed Tinubu. Not all of them uh, will not. I mean, the media, as far as I know, uh, because I'm a practitioner, is fair enough in Nigeria. Yes, uh, I, we, we can agree that some have um, certain sentiments towards uh, certain people or certain parties and all of that. But uh, on a general ground, I mean, we have a more uh, liberal media in Nigeria, uh, and then he, he could have taken advantage of that. Okay, let's even say that um, uh, many of them, you know, are, are not favorable to him. There is one that we know he has control over, and that would be the Television Continental, TVC. Uh, why not, um, you know, organize um, a debate? Why, why are they not impressed upon the Television Continental, you know, to organize a debate? Uh, that will be controlled, you know, they invite the people they want, and then they have a debate. I mean, I, 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 that's okay. an excuse, you know, and that's a, a, an easy way of saying it is because we don't trust. But right now, we have not had any. Um, they have designed their strategies, and their strategies is to use up. town hall meetings to talk to Nigerians. But how many, how many Nigerians? I mean, the message goes faster. It goes round, and it shows that it ensures that you are certain. For example, I'll draw a very quick example. Um, uh, when the candidate of the PDP, uh, talking about uh, Alaji Atiku Abubakar, was in Kaduna, and he was talking, you know, to the Nigerian people, and he made a certain point. I'm sure you remember now about uh, why uh, they need to vote for him and all that. Because uh, he said that, but because the media was present 
they were able to capture it. They were able to re report it in the way, and of course, the banters and the counter arguments yeah. that came after. Let's wrap up, please. Yes. All right. So basically, what I'm saying is, it is not an acceptable excuse. Um, there is nothing that stops a Nigerian, a prospective Nigerian president, from talking to the Nigerian people in the media that they do organize and understand and they do okay. recognize. All right. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we've run out of time. Mr. Akatuba, very, very quickly now, if you're still there, um, what would you suggest uh, for the future? Because, yes, no matter how we see it, it, it could also uh, be a little bit valid that uh, media houses could be biased and there should be a neutral ground. Uh, so if you're suggesting bodies that should organize uh, presidential debates, governorship debates and all that in the future, what would it be? Just very briefly, please. I'm very, I'm highly disappointed at the Nigerian media space. And I, I feel very sorry for the audacity to say that each of the media houses will be organizing their town hall. And that shows that we really have a big problem in the country. If the media, the fourth day of frame of the yes. what cannot put what themselves body? together under broadcasting organization. Okay. They cannot put themselves together under broadcasting organization and come with the Institute of International Affairs, Civic and, and Democratic Institute and put a national debate in which the people that will do the questioning are selected carefully to represent a broad spectrum of, of, of constituents and arrive is blaspheming Tinubu that Tinubu have a choice. If a hundred media are organizing debate, the meeting could be attending a hundred. Just wrap up. And then wrap up. If the gentleman who spoke there, he should have known that people have been speaking through the same media to start off with well far by the day. So the idea okay. of saying that it's a excuse is not tenable to him, he can form his opinion and make a choice about the vote. But Tinubu is speaking loud and clear, okay. directing constituencies, and he has also been using jingles to narrate to you, and he has presented the manifesto. Okay, okay, Mr. To, okay, Mr. Akatuba. Mr. Akatuba, sorry. Uh, future opportunities for him to attain their uh, well organized. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. You have made the point I, I really asked. Um, if media houses come together under the Broadcasting Organization of Nigeria and organized debates, it will be more neutral because from every media house, possibly there will be people who will contribute. And that is the suggestion I, I really needed to hear. So uh, going forward, uh, Nigerians should look for an alternative, not every media house organizing. Well, it's a good point, And we hope that those who are uh, concerned should look into it. Um, I'd like to thank you, gentlemen, for coming on the program. Olubenga, George, thank you so much for coming on the program today. Um, Mr. Mr. Alexa, I didn't have, have my own last word. If you will, you will, no, 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 we don't have time. Just, I do hope that we'll have another. Just, we'll have another time with you. The media will have to compare to ABC. Yeah, we don't have that, time. That, that's thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. And people keep looking at it and understanding it. We'll and I thank my brother. We'll call you again. We'll call you again another time. Thank you so much, Mr. Thank Akatuba you. as well. Thank you so much. We'll take a break now and take the news and the run-up continues in a moment. Stay with us.